Ryan Pace did it, and it still doesn't feel real. So in my last video, if you watched it, I talked about Ryan Pace's watershed moment. What's he going to do? Is he going to try to move up to number four and be super aggressive, mortgage the future? Is he going to stay at 20? Is he going to let the draft come to him and make the right move? And the latter is what he did. And I still can't believe the Chicago Bears drafted Justin freaking Fields at number 11. I'm numb. So like I'm sitting there as the draft's unfolding, like I'm sure many of you Bears fans were, and we all know the first three picks obviously aren't in play for us. The only question for us was obviously, is Mac Jones actually going to be the Niners pick, or is it going to be Trey Lance, or possibly still Fields, you never know. And then of course we come to find out it's Trey Lance. Now that was actually a good thing for us, in my opinion. So once that happened, Atlanta's on the clock, and I'm sitting here biting my nails. I don't really in my heart believe the Bears are going to get up there. I just don't think they were going to be able to afford, or that Atlanta at least wouldn't want to go back to 20. So Atlanta picks Pitts, and that was the flashpoint when Atlanta took Pitts, and that was there was two quarterbacks left to fall. Because I would talk, I mean, Mac Jones, I didn't really want him, but I would have taken him. I mean, obviously, I just want a new, a new hope at quarterback, right? Like I said in my last video. They take Pitts, though, and that means Jones and Fields now, every pick, pretty much, you know, not the Bengals, obviously, but, you know, you've got uh, the Panthers, the Broncos coming up, um, the Lions were a dark horse, people were saying, which I never really believed, but you never know, because it's the Lions, and every pick is going by, and it's just, I keep, and I'm checking Twitter, too, because I'm sure you guys know, these picks can be spoiled on Twitter, um, Every pick's going by and not not fields, not fields, or not a quarterback even, not a quarterback, not a, and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm and I'm seeing you guys on Twitter too, that, that if you're watching, that's screaming like, Pace, for the love of the good Lord, please do this, like, do not let fields just fall to the, Pan uh, the Patriots, or, you know, once he got past Denver... I was screaming, not really because my kid was asleep, but I was screaming inside, please, Ryan, make this move. Please, please, please. And sure enough, after a trade between uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys, ironically enough, the Giants got leapt over at number 11, who would seemingly wanted Devonta Smith, who's who the Eagles took. And whenever the Eagles were, or the Giants, excuse me, were sitting there at 11 and I saw that trade box light up and I saw the Bears were on the clock, I'm not going to lie, I, I got emotional. Like, I didn't like cry cry, but I was misty eyed and I still didn't know who it was. I was still in my heart. I was just saying it's, again, I just wanted, I wanted a new quarterback, so I would have been okay, okay with Mac Jones, but I was literally like praying, not that you should pray for such things, but like I was just praying for it to be Justin Fields, for the first words out of uh, the announcer's mouth to be Justin. And so, of course, they come out and they, they make start to make the selection, and there's drawn out a little bit, but obviously for something really important about the relief efforts in Chicago, which is super important, way more important than football. Um, but it, it added to the anxiety a little bit, right, of having to wait even longer for the selection, um, and then the gentleman that Roger Goodell has on the stage with him announces that pick is Justin Fields. I'm, I cried. I mean, I, I said I didn't cry, cry like you would if you lost somebody, but I, 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 I had solid, solid misty eyes. I'll put it that way. Like I was so emotional because this to me, and I'll get into the whole draft as a whole. This to me, if you're a Bears fan, like I am. This was the first time in my life, and I'm 33 years old, where I felt like the Bears truly did it right, if you could say that, at the time of a draft. I know hindsight, and you have to wait five years to see how a draft class pans out. And I'm not suggesting a GM and coach should just exclusively listen to the fans either, because obviously we're you know, supposed to be the dum-dums, and they're the ones that are professional at their job. But if you're a Bears fan long enough like I am, you're so used to them picking 
you know, Shea McClellan instead of Jones, or, I mean, obviously Trubisky instead of Watson. Like, you're just so used to us feeling like we know the obvious pick, and they zig when everybody says zag. Like, I don't, whether they're trying to prove like there's some kind of genius or what, I don't know. But that is what I am so used to as a Bears fan of all of us sitting here, you know, yeah, just fans at home, but all of us sitting here screaming, this is clearly who you should take. Like Deshaun Watson, legal troubles aside right now. Deshaun Watson, winner, big stage, leader, everything the city would have just embraced him so much and he would have done the same. And they picked a, a, a kid from North Carolina that had one good year at North Carolina. Yeah, he had a good, but, and I don't want to talk too much about that because that's in the past now, but you get what I'm saying. Like, that's where in my heart, before they actually made the field's pick, even after the trade-up where it was clear they were going to take a quarterback at that point, I was thinking in my heart, this is going to be the latest edition of the Bears zigging when everybody says zag. They're going to take Mac Jones, and we're going to be left to look back on this in five years and think, we could have had who I think will be an all-pro Justin Fields, Instead, we took Mac Jones, who I think ceiling is like an Alex Smith if he's in the right situation. And they didn't. And like I said, to me, it's like literally right now the way it feels, drinking the Kool-Aid, it is a watershed moment for me as a Bears fan at least. Um, I just have never experienced anything like this weekend where you go into the weekend feeling so down about a team and you come out literally 180 degrees different, even just after the one pick. And like I said, we'll get into the other picks here in a second. But I'm telling you, this was a moment, regardless of what happens from here, that as a Bears fan, I am never going to forget. So amazingly enough, it didn't stop there. So after the amazing day one, which I'm still buzzing off of, by the way, we go into day two with both, by the way, of our second and third round picks, which was... Again, I know we gave up a high amount to move up nine spots in round one. But honestly, I'm not that upset with how much we gave up. We gave up the first and the fifth this year and the first and the fourth next year. Okay, if Justin Fields doesn't pan out by some chance, we're going to be already beyond next year anyways. We'll have all of our picks back, so we won't be still feeling that pain of this trade. By the way, I think he is going to pan out, but regardless. So day two, I think everybody universally agrees the Bears need offensive line help and possibly receiver help. That's mainly driven by, we're thinking, Anthony Miller's on the way out, which I don't know about that now. So day two rolls around, and the big prospect that's on the board, ironically enough, as far as O-line, is Tevin Jenkins, the offensive lineman from Oklahoma State. Now this is a guy that most people had mocked to us at number 20, a top 3-4 to four O tackle in the draft by just about every board you could look at. So I'm thinking, first off, why is he still available? I mean, you see it every year, right? So people slide out of the first round that shouldn't. That's just the way the board falls sometimes. But round two starts, and he's not taken in the first six, seven picks. And I'm starting to think, and I do think Ryan Pace was probably going to trade back. But when this happened and this guy's available at pick 39, I don't blame Pace one bit. So Ryan Pace trades up, swaps second round picks, has to give up our third round pick and the sixth round pick. Gets a fifth round pick back though. Takes Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle from Oklahoma State, who is a mauler. Um, pretty good feed. I'm not here to give a scout report on it. I'm not a scout, okay? But from everything I read, his biggest thing is his tenaciousness. And you can get that in the interviews too. He's exactly what this offensive line needed, which was an attitude adjustment, Okay. Now, yeah, Matt Nagy has to be willing to run the ball, okay? But this represents to me kind of that Olin Krutz mentality finally making its way into the O-line room. And we sorely, sorely needed it. So the fact that the Bears now, as of round two, got two first-round prospects and two guys that most people thought we had to be either or, like, well, if you trade for Fields, you're not going to get Tevin Jenkins. Or if you don't get Fields, hey, take Tevin Jenkins, solidify the O-line, protect Andy Dalton. They got them both. Blew me away. Blew me away. So two instant starters. Well, Fields, we'll see when he starts. But they need to protect Fields, obviously, make sure the O-line's settled. But Tevin Jenkins, I think, will start day one. Right tackle, maybe left. Leno might be out. We'll see. So beyond that, then they get double dip in the fifth round. Larry Borum from Missouri. 
Another road grading tackle. Now, I think a lot of people didn't see this coming. I think they were thinking receiver. A lot of good receivers falling, myself included. I thought, they, again, we were assuming that Miller was out, and I don't know that he is now. Um, so they get Larry Borum, more of a right tackle guard type guy. Um, definitely not a left tackle prospect, it seems. But nevertheless, the same mentality. You can see the philosophy shift here with the O-line. They're soft. They've been soft. And if you talk to Kruitz or, or anybody listen to Olin Kruitz talk or anybody talk, you don't need an entire five linemen to have that mentality. You just need like one or two. And then it permeates throughout the entire group. And with, I mean, I think Whitehair and Daniels are solid, solid future, I mean, guards. They have a long future ahead of them. Mustafer hopefully continues, you know, to grow. Um, but the interior seems like it's in pretty good shape. And now you add these two tackles to the mix to add toughness. Ah, man. All of a sudden, it's amazing. Our quarterback future is bright and our O-line future seems bright. It's amazing. It, is, it just, it blows me away. After the first two picks of this draft, how much different I felt, let alone the first three. Where, again, I know O-line picks aren't quote-unquote the sexy pick, but they are so important. So important. That's why we are where we are. Lack of investment in early rounds in O-line. And Ryan Pace acknowledged that. And he's obviously changed and acted on it. So, from there, another kind of surprise pick. They get uh, Khalil Herbert from uh, Virginia Tech, running back. Shifty, uh, short transfer from Kansas, but had a really good year this past year, kind of broke out. Good third down type back. Um, good compliment, I think. Uh, they did bring in Williams um, to compliment uh, Montgomery, but the, the running back groom right now, I think, Cohen's kind of a hybrid, right? He's like a slot slash running back, but I don't want to see Cohen run too much between the tackles. I I think he's much more suited for for the slot, which I think that's what their plan is now, especially if they drafted this guy. So Khalil Herbert, really good value pick, though. If you look at PFF and stuff, I, it seems like a really good value Good depth, right? Good, brings a little something that maybe Montgomery doesn't as far as the shiftiness. So, love that pick. And then finally, in the first, or excuse me, in the second sixth round pick they have, Daz Newsom, speedster from North Carolina. And this is what I think a lot of people were waiting for, myself included. I was kind of hoping for maybe like a Rondell Moore in the second round. Um, but I don't have no quarrels, obviously, with getting Tevin for the reasons I just outlined. Because um, that was probably more of a need. Uh, cause they did bring in Marquise in the receiver room, who is uh, a, a fast receiver. But you obviously want to bring in somebody young to kind of fill that out because uh, I feel like maybe this could be kind of similar to how when Mooney came in last year um, and they had Ted Ginn, well, we saw how that went, right? Mooney was way better and more ready than people thought. And then Ginn just never even, it's almost like Ginn knew it and just said, F it. <laughs> I mean, that's me speculating, but... That's just the way it seemed to me, and then shortly enough, they you know they cut they cut him. So, and we all see now Darnell Mooney is going to be a solid number two option this year. So, anyways, Daz Newsom, um, looking at him, kind of a similar build to Mooney, speed, really good ball skills. He had a sick catch against Duke where he caught the ball behind the guy's back, literally. Um, so I kind of see some Darnell Mooney esque traits uh, as far as his speed, his smoothness, his ability to to play the position, and even though he's not the biggest guy, has really good ball skills. He's a good football player. He's got a good film on him, um, and his physical traits aren't terrible. Um, obviously, he was in the sixth round, so it's not like he's got it all, but Darnell Mooney was in the fifth. So Ryan Pace is known for finding these gems, and I like what I see at Daz, if nothing else, for kick returning. So just Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy and the Bears just checking boxes in this draft, and it's just blowing me away as I'm watching it. It's just amazing. So round six rolls around. Then I'm, this, this is where I start speculating, okay, we got to go some defense. And so they go Thomas Graham, cornerback Oregon, who I believe had opted out uh, this past season, but had a really productive college career up until then. I think he had seven or eight interceptions. Um, he's another one. You go by the PFF grade, if you want to go by something, rated much higher than where we got him at pick 228. So just, but he has a lot of good film too. So that's where I'm, I, I think I see a difference here in the past where pace was so trait driven and not necessarily what's on the film though. And it seems like with this draft, it's much more film driven. Yeah. You want traits, but you want good football players, um, not to be too cliche. And that's what this draft is chock full of in my opinion. So Thomas Graham jr. Looks like he's going to be good corner depth. I don't suspect he'll, you know, certainly start or even be the nickel, but you can never have too many corners because sometimes you, you lose a couple corners and all of a sudden you're hurting. So I'm really pleased they added that in the sixth round. Seems like a good value. Um, and then the last pick was uh, Kyrus Tonga, defensive tackle from BYU. 
I like this pick too. And this is another one. Again, he was rated much higher than where the Bears got him. Uh, real big body. Just real, um, not real tall. He's about 6'2", but he's massive. Um, real, real thick and wide. I see him as, you know, obviously Eddie Goldman will be back this year, but he opted out last year. And that hurt us big time in the run game. We didn't have anybody that could come close to, to filling in for Eddie Goldman. And I'm not saying this guy certainly will, but I do think his physical uh, stature and his build and his skill set fits the mold to where if Eddie Goldman, you know, hopefully doesn't get hurt or anything. But, you know, Eddie Goldman has to come off the field sometimes, obviously. Um, this guy can feel in much better than anybody we had on the roster. So I see this as like the, the backup depth nose where we don't lose that guy that really clogs the middle in a 3-4 defense when you need to have a nose that really can try to maintain and, and, and complicate two gaps for the offense. So I can't, I mean, I'm looking at the picks right now and I just, I have no major issue with any of them at all. Um, I'm just blown away, guys. Like I said, I, I, my last video I think was called, you know, Ryan Pace's watershed moment. What's he going to do? And again, we'll see in five years, four or five years. But for right now, I have no quarrels. Obviously, the first two picks, I think, would have sealed, sealed the deal for most of us as far as being a, a top, being a great draft. But then he backed it up with solid picks to protect Justin with the O-line and then filling in the weapons and just solid, solid draft. And I'm just so excited and I can't believe how much I'm looking forward to the 2021 NFL season, all of a sudden, or Bears season, NFL in general, of course, but Bears especially now, when I wouldn't look forward to it at all. So, yeah, I'm sure I'll do some more videos as, as it rolls around. I mean, I don't, I'll probably pump out too many, but I'll probably do some videos over what to do with, you know, what to do with Justin Fields. Will he start right away? Should he start right away? Blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll say that for a different video, but I just want to give my thoughts. And there's been a lot of reaction videos, but I just want to give my thoughts on the draft class. Obviously, the big pick with Justin Fields. And I think what it means for this franchise and to me, it's hope. That's why I said in the last video, all we want is hope. And I am full of hope now. And that's all I can ask for. So Bears fans, bear down. Keep the faith. Let's go.